Hey everybody, welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm Michael Nolan. Tonight we're going to be talking about Robert Plant. Just a few evenings ago, he sang live at a charity event and he chose to sing four songs, one by Donovan, Season of the Witch, and three Led Zeppelin songs. But you know, tonight what I want to do is focus on one of those Led Zeppelin songs. And of course, I'm talking about the legendary Stairway to Heaven. All right, so first of all, I do want to bring up one thing about this entire performance. It is not one of the tightest performances I've ever seen by anybody, really. Uh, it seemed more like a jam. They had gone over quickly before uh, the show started, and uh, it was very loose, okay? And on the first two Led Zeppelin songs, uh, Robert sounded okay, you know? You know how he hits those high notes that he used to hit and then snaps them off? That's kind of a new style he's developed ever since 2007 anyway. But then he got to Stairway to Heaven, and that's what this whole video is about. Now, first of all, there has been a love-hate relationship between Robert Plant and this song. From the get-go, he was never fully satisfied with this song as a total event. He has always given credit to the orchestration of the song, what Jimmy and the rest of the band did to the song, but he always felt that he let the song down both lyrically and vocally. Two things I absolutely disagree with. I think the lyrics are sublime and his vocals on the original recording are supreme. So I don't know what he's talking about. Now, years later, he also saw Hart, you know, when they were at the Kennedy Center, right? And they were honoring Led Zeppelin. And he said when Ann sang that song, for the first time he was able to step back and listen to the song, and he said he rather liked it at that point. Now, another thing he said in a very recent interview is that he is just now getting to the point in his life where he can separate himself from uh, his older material, whether that's with Led Zeppelin or his solo careers or in and out of projects, no matter what, he, you know what, he's been so busy, folks. This is the one guy in Led Zeppelin that really never retired for any length of time. He's always been on the road, not like he used to, but he still tours even today with Alison Krauss. But let's get back to that point where he says he's just now able to listen to his past stuff uh, with a more objective mind, uh, just as a listener because he was always too close to the music. Even to this day, he reinvents past material live just to change it up. And he said that in this interview right around the time they were talking about Stairway to Heaven. So there's two instances where Robert seems to have said that he's made his peace with this song. Ah, uh, but has he? You see, that's what tonight's video is all about. Like I said, the first two songs he sings from Led Zeppelin are fine. The band's not in great uh, tight shape, really, but his voice, I, I was listening to how he's handling things, the timber of his voice as it's aged and everything, and I, you know what, I could still see him getting together with Jiminy and of course, John Paul Jones and uh, John Sun and do at least one more set of concerts. I think he still has the voice. But then he gets to Stairway to Heaven. And it's in this performance where you see him mauling notes. I mean, hitting the wrong notes. And uh, in the past when he would do that, he'd resolve it. There's no attempt at doing that at all. As a matter of fact, during the whole performance, he seems rather lost, looking to the band for guidance. It, it, uh, look at his face while they perform this song. So that gets me to my final point. And here's the question to the tribe, all right? Because here's what I see. 
I don't think this man has ever made peace with this wonderful song. I don't know why, and really at this point, I don't care because he can't even perform it without at least subconsciously sabotaging it. I don't go with the theory that, well, he's older now and he just can't sing it because we've seen him and heard him sing very recently. It's, he doesn't have the voice he had when he was 24, obviously, but the man still has character and everything. He has more left in his voice than Paul McCartney does of his. Now, that gets me back to the whole idea, the prayer, that one day Led Zeppelin will give us at least one final televised concert, just one more, that's all we're asking for. What would you want them to do? To do it as close to the notes like they did in 2007? You know, there's still some jamming there, but I'm saying very identifiable versions of Led Zeppelin material, right? Or would you rather see them play to their age, a more intimate setting, and play with the material, but at the same time giving us a wonderful and exciting show? Ah, hope springs eternal, folks. And I have a second question for the tribe tonight. You know, the same article I read all of this information in also did you know how they do it you go you scroll it down oh led zeppelin's best albums this article listed coda as their worst okay i can understand that coda would rank last on my list and then they go in through the outdoor as the second worst <laughs> led zeppelin album and i could go with that it would also rank right in that position. However, I'd let everybody know there is a major difference between these two albums. One is good, the other is great. But the first seven albums by Led Zeppelin are all masterpieces. Every single one of them, including Presence. If you don't like Presence, listen again. That's all I can say. It's a wonderful album. But do you know what they ranked at the third worst position? They ranked Led Zeppelin's physical graffiti as the third worst Led Zeppelin album. Heretics, what else can I say? How could they rank this wonderful album so low? It's a double album, so it's got uh, its lesser moments like all great double albums do, but it is a work of art all in itself. And in my humble opinion, the second best double album in rock and roll with the Beatles' White Album slightly edging it out. And I mean ever so slightly. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give us a thumbs up if you do. That helps the YouTube algorithm do its thing to fight fiendish thingies out there and send the video out into the ether. Net. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel as of yet, that's easy. Just hit that subscribe to the tribe button, tap that top bell icon, and you're there, and you'll be notified of all my stuff. All right, I'm Michael Nolan. This is The Bottom Line, and together, folks, you and I, we are the tribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.